meeting of the City Council of the City of Rancis Pass here at 600 West Cleveland Boulevard, Rancis Pass, Texas, March 3rd, 2014 at 7 p.m. Stand up for the invocation. Lord, I'd like to give thanks for this beautiful day. Of course, every day you wake up, it's a good one. Especially this evening, it's good to see so many people out here to show up for this council meeting. It's also good to know that a lot of people care about the community. I'd like to give thanks for you to give us strength and the knowledge to do what is right and what is just for equally for everyone. Also to wish those that don't feel well, hopefully they have a speedy recovery and will get better. Also give thanks to all our public works and everybody that works hard to make the city go throughout the days, day in and day out. Also a special thanks to uh, all the children that are here, because I know there's got a lot of work going on, but this is very important for them to be a part of this. I also like to thank the, the, the school, especially the boys basketball team, being successful going to state coming up this week. We wish everybody a good game, and everybody to have a good evening, and a safe trip to and from. Thank you, Mark, for everything. <laughs> and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Francisco bring us to item number three, the consent agenda. <coughs> All of the following items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the Council member so requests. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Do I hear a motion to consider an act of the minutes of February 17, 2014? Make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 This is going to bring us to item number four. It's a public hearing. Mr. Lawrence, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor. I declare a public hearing open for the purpose of taking up the request of James and Irma Tucker to rezone the property presently zoned as R16 to a two apartment district that includes a bed and breakfast zoning use. The property is described as northeast one half of lot three, block B, Burton and Danforth, being 2.19 acres. Are Mr. and Mrs. Tucker present tonight? You want to come forward, Mr. and Mrs. Tucker, and tell the council what it is you have in mind doing? Yes. Mr. Luce is going to represent us. Fine. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council, for allowing us this time on your agenda. As we can tell, it's a very busy agenda. Thank you in advance for your consideration of changing the zoning on this property to include its use as a bed and breakfast. By definition, a bed and breakfast in this house would be limited by the four bedrooms and four bathrooms. Traditionally, the owner would occupy one bedroom, and only three would be available for B&B use. Best estimates would say perhaps three or four vehicles at maximum capacity, so traffic would not be impacted, much more than it is now as the Tuckers have four automobiles themselves. Certainly not as much traffic as if a very large family were to move into the house. Mrs. Carrillo and the Zoning Board have indicated that this area will soon all be commercial, so it seems a very positive thing to allow a bed and breakfast on this site at present, as this might ensure that this beautiful piece of property maintain its present dignity. Also, Mrs. Carrillo has previously noted any special event, for example, a wedding, would require a special use permit from the City of Aransas Pass. Again, let me thank you in advance for your positive vote. Sir, could you, for your record, for the record, could you give your name, please? I'm sorry. My name is Dane Luce with Luce Properties. All right. And Mr. Luce, who's going to operate the bed and breakfast? My real estate firm, sir. We do not have a prospective buyer at this time, but we would like to have the opportunity to present it for sale with that option. So who resides there now? Mr. and Mrs. Tucker. Okay. But they will not be operating a bed and breakfast? They have not given me any indication that they intend to do that. They have elderly parents in San Antonio, and they need to move back closer to them. Okay. Members of the council have any questions? Right now, basically, you're just going to open the door in case somebody would like to continue it as a bread and breakfast. Is that what you're looking at? Well, I don't know if continue is the right word. If it passes. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, it would. It would be spot zoning. It's they're asking to be changed to a two, which is right in the middle of our 16 residential area. Is there anyone else present who would like to speak in favor of the application? Thank you, Mr. Lewis. May I add, Mr. Lawrence? Sure. There are some other businesses. In fact, there's a dance studio two doors down. Yeah, that was grandfathered in. I think that's been there for years. Okay. I visited with Mr. Holmes in the zoning office here in the city hall, and he couldn't find any indication that there was ever any permission granted for that to be a dance hall. Well, I don't know. It's been there forever. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone present who is opposed to the application? Yes, ma'am. He brought up the fact that I have a dance studio there. That wasn't even inside the city limits when I put my dance studio there, which was 1957. 
and this is my 56th year to teach dancing. And I don't think that he should use that as an excuse because I, I think that the grandfather, and I'm only there for three hours a week, and my neighbors, which are on both sides, says, we don't even know you're there. So it's not like I'm doing heavy traffic and <clears throat> because I have only eight students and those eight students mean a lot to me because they have parents that care to have their children further their education besides just school education. And I kind of resent that they're using my studio as an excuse. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who's opposed to the application? Members of the council have any other questions or comments? Only if they'd add to that, Ann Milton, correct? Yes. I mean, people that don't know you, they didn't know who's speaking up. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you could just state your name, ma'am. State your name. I know everybody knows you, but still. Yes, I'm a hand melted. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and I came here in 1953. Yes, Thank you, Ms. Melton. Again, members of the council have any other questions or comments? Okay, my, my, my question is, is this house going to be uh, it's going to be sold with the uh, uh, marketing that it can be used as a bread and breakfast? Is that yes, it? More like an investment yes, property? Yes, if we sell it. We're, yes, not, we're not sure we're going to sell it. So we may turn it, what we're trying to do is have another option to use the property as a bed and breakfast. Okay. And, uh, I, I, think, I, I think it would really improve the community. I mean, it's not like we're, it's not, a, it's not your atypical type residential neighborhood with all the uh, heavy traffic. And uh, there, there's a, quite a bit of noise that goes on there, but uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive that our uh, venture would be uh, wouldn't be uh, noticed by anybody to tell you the truth. We have we have over two acres, and uh, uh, we have a large uh, deck out behind the house. Gathered, uh, I, I don't think you could you could hear anybody. Uh, you know, if, if there was any, if they, somebody wanted to have a barbecue, or okay. sit out there and have a glass of wine. Uh, it, it's going to be disturbing to the neighborhood at all. Okay. They back so, up to railroad tracks. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Anyone else have anything? Yeah, I want to add, according to the information that was given to the council here, it's shown that it's it's a recommendation by the Planning and Zoning Commission during its February 10, 2014 meeting that they recommend approval for the request of zoning change to the city council because I think they're also looking at, too, maybe it's an option. You don't know if you're going to do it or not, but also it's an avenue that you're looking to maybe help sell the house and the property. Actually, the, the, if I may, Mayor, the, um, the planning and zoning recommendation comes from a couple of factors. One, the, the speed of the roadway that we've talked over a long period of time. The width and speed of that roadway is really conducive to commercial development. That is an area of transition. We have a lot of industrial growth heading in that direction. But secondly, as we looked at the use tables within the general business category, residential was one of the uses the planning and zoning had talked about striking. We've revisited that uh, on a couple of occasions because that would impact several areas of town negatively, so they've backed away from that. But it's more the, the location, the area, the size of the lot, the fact that it backs up to residential. What you really need to understand is zoning is ethereal and it follows the property. No matter who owns it, no matter what right. happens, it will always be zoned that until the zoning changes. So there is an economic impact to both this property owner and the surrounding property owners. Those were some of the discussions that prompted, you know, residential to residential. Apartment is still within the residential continuum. So I, I'm not necessarily sure about spot zoning, but I guess it could be construed in that way. That's not what national planning standards say these days, but, and the density on two acres at an A2, um, that house is listed at half a million or close to, yeah. so to, to demolish a, a $400,000 house and rebuild an apartment complex that has a density on two acres is, is, is not an economically feasible, not going to say it's impossible because right. you know, people get wild here, but 
at this particular point, three bedrooms at the speed of that street is really something that that was looked at by Planning Commission, and that's why they came up with the recommendation. Anyone else have anything? If not, then I declare the public hearing closed. This will bring us to item number five. Consider an act on request of James Irma Tucker, rezoned from R16 residential district to an A2 apartment district that includes, among other uses, bed and breakfast, zoning use, properties described in Northeast Half Block, Lot 3, Block 5, B, Burton, and Denver, SD, 2.19 acres. Do I hear a motion to approve? Will I make a motion that we approve the request of James and Irma Tucker to rezone from R16 to A2? And the reason why is just based on where the location is real far into the property. It's not right up there, and it's got plenty of room for the traffic to be off of the streets and not interfere with the area. I second that motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Mayor, your vote was in the affirmative? Yes, ma'am. Approved. Thank you. Now I'll move us along to item number six. Consider an act on uniforms for the City of Aransas Pass front office staff. Mayor and Council, this would be the second uniform item that you saw. The first one was for fire departments. The second one is transitioning the entire front office staff just so we have a more consistent and professional look. We will be. This is Patrick Lopez with G&K Services, who's now modeling the shirt. We will be transitioning all of our front office, all of our faces to the public into some type of shirt that's easily identifiable with not only their name but also the city logo. So that also when we're out on the street and we're on city time, we're easily accessible to the public. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Will they be allowed to wear jeans? Yes, sir. They'll be able to wear the bottom half will be obviously either khaki, professional pants, or also jeans. So they're not just stuck on one color? Yes, they're not just stuck on one color, no. And the uniforms are a rotation. I mean, there's services that are included with the uniforms. Civic Center is next. And then we'll be moving to the front office staff at Public Works. Even some of the city manager staff, Yvonne and Amanda, we will be in uniform as well. Okay. Is that going to be the basic color or is it different? That's the color. Navy blue? Is that navy blue? No, it's not, right? Navy blue. Is that navy blue? Is that black? It looks like black to me. Dark navy blue. Okay. It makes the yellow on the logo stand out. Okay. 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 So is it? I just thought I was really tired or something. But that will be all city staff will have the same color and the same type? Yes. Okay. Yes. Makes us easy to identify. We're also working on our name badges and lanyards to make sure that we are identifiable and easily approachable. Uniform. Thank you for the model. The current cost is going to be absorbed within the current department budgets. Okay. Now, if you all demand them to be in jeans or pants or of any nature, you just let me know. I can get that done, too. Is there any other questions? And just FYI, staff is not opposed to the idea as long as they get to wear jeans. Yeah. I can see that. So do I hear a motion to consider the new uniforms for the act on the uniform city of Lance Pass front office staff? I make a motion we go into agreement with G&K services for uniform services for the city staff. Front office. Front office. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat.
brings us to item number seven, consider and act on approving items for the Rancid Pass Police Department, which would be a accept grant agreement from Ed Rachel Foundation for the purchase of police vehicles. Do we have to do these separate, Alan, or maybe or all at once? Probably all two. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll stop with, well, let me read through one more quick. B would be guardian tracking LLC for a host of personnel, documentation, and early intervention and recognition software. C item will be memorandum of understanding between City of Rancid Pass Police Department and Crime Stoppers and Rancid Pass Police Department. And Rancid Pass for you. There are guess really, unless somebody has a problem, one reason you can do them all. Do them all one. Yeah. Is there any problem? Let's go on with one motion. Or yeah. 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 I just have a, a question on the, uh, what, what is the uh, understanding between the uh, Rancid's Pass for you? What, what is that? I can kind of explain. <coughs> okay. The uh, Michelle Foundation approach to that grant, uh -huh. putting for 150000 and the board met. Most of the times they're not approving grants on ours. They get approved for the cost of one vehicle. This is 45000 and easier for us to do to sign off on that and accept those funds from them. All they require from me is like a, a annual report on that property. areas are expanded for the rest of the city staff because it is, um, especially when we do have uh, not just problem employees, but those employees who merit uh, an increase based on good work, good performance, those kinds of things. And when we have a limited budget, you have to look at the employee's personnel file and their history. Um, so we perceive it to be an invaluable asset and for the price, you just cannot beat it. Any other questions? to approve item number seven, considering that approving the items for Ranch Pass Police Board Department, A, B, and C. I make a motion we approve items A, uh, a B, and C and, uh, in item number seven for the Ranch Pass Police Department. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you, Eric. Ms. Barrio. to item number eight, consider an act of proven items of the Rance Pass Information Technology Department, which will be item A, contract renewal with the antivirus software, item B, 12-month service agreement with Citrix, Godot Assist, 
from March 1st, 2014 through February 28th, 2015. Mayor and Council, these are both, uh, these are both basic, um, software program protection, internet protection, virus protection for, um, the city. We do use an intranet and also are very strong on the, uh, internet. So it's important we keep our antivirus software up to date and also all of our service agreements. Um, the the go to assist allows Jeff to remotely go into any computer and um, check any issues whether somebody's on sites they're not supposed to lock down those kinds of things so it, it's very critical to operations. Both of these are budgeted items. Any questions from the council? <coughs> no. Mm -hmm. well, no questions. Do I hear a motion to approve? Item number eight, consider not proven items to rents pass the commission to come to department A and B. We make a motion that we approve the IP department's request for a contract renewal of the anti virus software and the 12 month service agreement with Citrix. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Item number nine, consider an act on approval of payment of annual service fees to Tyler Technology for the software maintenance in the amount of $55,815.43. That's a big chunk, huh? Yeah. Uh, Tyler Technologies is uh, the parent company of the software that we use, ENCODE. Um, I do not believe this council has ever seen an ENCODE bill, but it, it, it scares the staff when we have to pay the ENCODE bill. But um, the software, um, we've been paying this amount for a very long time, and we're not using one-fifth of the capability of that software. So this year, that's our big push, use what we're paying for. Um, it is expensive, but it's a lot less than other software packages out there. I in the future, and probably within our um, bonding capacity, we may be coming to you um, with alternate options for uh, a software package that's maybe a little bit more robust that allows for online payments or an upgrade to Tyler Technologies to allow for online payments, viewing your bills, usage, all of the things that our customers are now requiring of us. We don't have that functionality right now, um, partly because we've got some internet issues um, with uh, Cable One and our providers and then also the computer software. So this, this really is a, it's a bill you've never seen before, but it's a bill you're gonna see every year. <coughs> Okay, and this is just to maintain what we have right yes. now, not adding any other s additional services? No. Okay. We, we have been paying for some things on here, um, inventory and those kinds of things that we've not been using, so we're going to get the most bang for our buck. Um, we do have some training needs that we need to um, visit with Tyler Technology. Um, they're getting tired of answering their support line. They say, this is not a support issue, this is a training issue. Go get your training. So. Do they provide training with this? This cost? No, this is not. This is the basic sure. package cost. We there's still training dollars that are due. Who's our go-to person? We don't our have trainer. a go-to person anymore. We don't have a go-to person anymore. We had one central ENCODE user, which was our finance right. director. Um, none of the directors had um, ENCODE access. Now everybody has ENCODE access to their own um, to their own sites. However, um, Civic Center. Aquatic Center, Public Works are not on ENCODE because of our internet issues. One of the goals is to get everybody <coughs> consolidated so we're not operating or those departments have to come on site in order to get their own reports to work on their budgets, for example. So we, but do, we do plan to get somebody cross-trained? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we learned, and, and the, the training components are out there. It offers really good self-training. We learned to do payroll over weekend. I mean, it, it, right. it's there, we just, are taking steps to move in that direction. So do I it is a budgeted amount. Right. Yep. <laughs> so back to item nine. Do, do I hear a motion to consider the NAFTA approval? I make a motion that we approve payment of the annual service to higher technology for software maintenance in the amount of $55,815. I second. All in favor say aye. Aye. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. This is 
bring us to item number 10, consider an act on approving invoices for payment of the Rans Pass Public Works Department. Item A will be payment to Anderson Machinery for $6,164.90 for repair work done to the Rans Pass Public Works slope mower. Uh, Mayor, item B should not be on there. Item B was, was something we've signed off on. It's below the $5,000 threshold. Only item A requires council action. What did they actually do to a piece of machinery for my ass? What was wrong with it? Oh. Oh. Um, the slow mower is mounted into a, a bracket. And they had about maybe seven bolts that mounted to the frame of the slow mower unit. So that bracket was, had about three or four bolts that were shared off. They had to be replaced and maybe attached another bracket for it to it. That's, that's the total repair. And they had to remove the whole arm and said, you know, when it goes out and reaches out and holds, they have to be removed. That's basically it's all legal. Did they replace all the hydraulic hoses and everything else as part uh, of a PM? They just removed them. Uh, they were still serviceable. How, how old is that equipment, those hoses? Uh, it's a 2004. So, uh, what, what are your hours on it? They had like 2,600 hours on it. What's your normal PMs on that piece of equipment? Uh, I guess used every every week. Normal PM is done daily. It's just a routine check? It's just a routine check of what's yeah. working, anything well, leaking? It's brought in for routine hour maintenance. Okay. Most of our equipment is, is about this age category, and unfortunately, all the grants that we had applied for and gotten, um, if we would have used force account, city staff resources, those grants would have been able to purchase, purchase, uh, to be able to purchase pieces of equipment necessary to do an install, to do a maintenance, those right. kinds of things. We just haven't done that here. We're getting there. And on that, too, we're also looking that we have one person that does it, or we have somebody cross train within no, the different. We do ourselves. If there's something we can't handle, we have to send it Right. When you went out for work on that, did you go for outside bids or just straight uh, to Anderson? Actually, nobody wanted to close it. Because I can understand uh, that. There's a uh, company in New Holland, and uh, they don't want to If I may ask Paul, did they uh, weld it back or what kind of metal was it? They put a bracket on it. It's called a uh, you know, cassette, that's what it was called. Mm -hmm. It's just a bracket that was called a uh, reinforcer. And it's mounted on the tree. So we've used it a few times already mm -hmm. up in the harbor. Got a little bit of warranty on it? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate your answers. <laughs> Any other questions for anybody? <laughs> okay, I'll bring us to item 10. Do I hear a motion for uh, for number 10 for considering that to approve in the invoice payment for the Lance Pass Public Works Department for item 8? I make a motion that we approve payment for the invoice for Anderson Machine in the United States. I second. Okay, Paul, 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 Paul. Aye. 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 Mayor and Council, I, I needed to bring to your attention. We, we should not be spending the money before you approve it. This was just an emergency repair. We didn't note that on the agenda item. Okay. On future items, you'll approve before Prior. we spend yeah. the dollars. But it is working right, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you need to see it count every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That brings us to item number 11. Consider and that a settlement agreement between the City of Rancis Pass and the City of Ingleside regarding water accounts for Dynamic Industries and Ms. Delia Trujillo. Uh, Mayor and Council, these are two accounts that uh, were mistakenly billed by Ingleside. They're really on the Aransas Pass water lines. Um, we reached an agreement with Ingleside on water usage. That amount to be reimbursed to the City of Aransas Pass is $5,042.77. JP uh, is the meter reader who caught the, um, caught the accounts. And this is for how long? How long? I'm sorry? Four and a half years. 
And so this is a payment for those for that time frame? Yes, that's the actual cost of the water that we have paid and the side they're paying back to us. This doesn't include the upcharge they may have collected. Mm -hmm. It's just okay. the cost of the land. for item number 11. I make a motion that we uh, approve the settlement agreement between the city of Aransas Pass and the city of Ingleside regarding the accounts that they owe us. So. All in favor say aye. Aye. We almost paid for the mower on that There you go. Manor. That's a good job on the piece for it. Find a, find a few more <laughs> is not able to make it today, so he'd like to table the item to the next council meeting when he can attend. You pass on it, Mayor. <coughs> well, item 12 be passed on. That brings us to item number 13, consider an act on approving budget amendments items, which will A, will be budget presentation by the finance director, Ms. Donna Thomas. There you go, Mayor. Um, you should have your packet, um, a short little financial summary. shortfall MDD must vote or the shortfall must be made up by the general fund. So um, Sarah has been tasked with uh, going out and doing door-to-door -door sales, um, cold calling, getting those uh, weekly rentals booked. The weekends, we do very well on the weekends. Um, we are working, the MDD board um, is going to be working with the Caller Times, who's the Google uh, the Google rep in our area, to revamp the website. Um, and also do some sales and marketing. Um, the MDD board felt like we can't go out and market without the website being up to par well. because where would they go? They'd land. And the same thing for the Aquatic Center. In order for us to do some marketing at the Aquatic Center, we need marketing information. And so um, the contract that we entered into with um, Brenda McElwee, a point of sale system was installed recently at the pool. Um, that'll give us demographic information, not just zip codes, but gender and ages and things, so we can determine who's using the facility at what time, and we can mark it so that hopefully we stop hemorrhaging um, the loss at the at the aquatic center. And then secondly, the students at Texas A&M Corpus Christi are looking at the graduate students are also looking at the aquatic center in terms of what we can do to improve operations. And one of those things is also a discussion of privatization. Is there something a third party can do better than the city's doing and turn that facility over? That facility is in some very dire need, and that's that's your item num that's your item B. Um, the aquatic center had not had an inspection since the facility was built. 
some of those slides are a danger. Um, if you notice on, on Facebook, we've closed them on right. the weekends. Uh, the slides have cracks in them in the fiberglass that would be dangerous to people sliding down. They didn't require an entire replacement, but they are going to require repairs. Um, and we're probably at about $50,000 of repairs to the Aquatic Center just to keep it safe, operable. Um, $30,000, $35,000 of that was budgeted. We knew we were going to need some repair. But we had to put some money in for capital outlay, too, new chairs, new things like that. We weren't able to do that just yet. Um, the plan is that maybe by the end of the season we have a better idea of where we stand, what we've done, who's coming, and we can come up with a better plan. Um, I wish I had a, a quicker answer for you on, on what we need to do to that facility, but it's in some pretty dire need right now. And it flows down to what, in November? We close for the season uh, in November. Um, obviously, we have some users who want to continue to do lap swim and those kinds of things. But it's just too expensive to run the heaters. Yes. Um, we have some problems with the deckings. We have some trip hazards. We have some some real, real, real big hazards with the slides and some of the other the lifts, the ADA lifts. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars is is going to be a drop in the bucket this year. Um, I, I fully expect that we're going to come back to you at some point with with some pretty serious needs. Um, item C is uh, the general election. Uh, we came to you last year, uh, last month, because we're not partnering with the school districts. The general election um, equipment was uh, going to be short $2,500, Yvonne. <coughs> Yvonne? Yes. It was going to be short about $2,500? Yes. Okay. And so uh, that is a budget transfer that has to happen within from the um, – City Council organization into the City Secretary. So that's that line item. The um, the Aquatic Center, after the 35000 that we've used, will require $19,000 from reserves. We don't have any other place to take that from other than reserves at this particular point in time. I will tell you again that $19,000 does not include any additional furniture, those kinds of things. I would really, really, really ask Council to really consider more than $19,000 simply because what we have out there is just barely enough. And I know we're already hemorrhaging, but we're about to save some money in some other areas and the pool is in dire need. And of course that pool is one of our biggest assets to the community, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. How much would you be when you're looking at um, looking at more than 19? What would you? Brittany, Brittany, furniture at the pool. I would say at least 10,000. So you're looking at 29. We're already looking at pulling 19,000 from the reserves for this, correct? Yes, sir. And we're barely in March, correct? Yep. The pool, the, pool will, the pool is expected to lose about two hundred twenty to $240,000 this year. It lost. It has lost that in prior years. You just hadn't seen it. has been very consistent. Right. It has been very consistent. You just had not seen the breakout in that manner. Um, we don't expect to have a huge loss at the collection station this year. We do have the $25,000 that was not funded for the Pelican Cove fence that fell back to reserve. Um, in addition, we are expected to save some dollars on uh, if we can negotiate the draft contract. Uh, and also, our engineering fees have been <coughs> reduced greatly. So, <coughs> right now, we're kind of spending money we don't have or hoping we will have. I, I would tell you that you're going to. We're expected to operate at a loss, whether the loss is 240 or whether the loss is 250 from the pool by itself. We have to make up that loss in another department because it will not be made up at the pool. And accountability for this? Uh, it, it will fall to me. It will fall to me. And I promise you that's why the students, that was their first assignment because we have to have the discussion, can somebody else do it better than we're doing it? I had talked to a four day council member. Our pool actually loses less than that. So, I know Ingleside's having trouble with their pool. <coughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. 
the all, all, all the municipalities really bundle this under parks and recreation because it's a general fund item. General fund departments always lose money. They're not money makers, which is why uh, third party people never want them. You have people wanting to come after your trash because it makes money. Right. You have people wanting to come after your water utilities because they make money. Nobody ever wants to come for those general fund items. This, in the normal course of events, would be a general fund item, but because how this was funded with MDD dollars, it's a special revenue fund all its own. But I'm thinking that if you know, we don't look at making the repairs, the replacements, it's oh, going to it, it, yeah. cost because more. we're going to go in more into the home, right. people not coming in. We're, we're at the point that if we, if we don't make the necessary repairs and have to close the slides down, 50 to 75 percent of the attraction is the slides. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition, the lift, the handicap lift, if we don't Very repair and yes. fix that. And then the heaters during during um, lap swim. That's not including all the pool decking that, that we still need to do. And, you know, so Mayor, while, while I would love to tell you that the loss is only going to be 250 this year, we're working really hard on the marketing effort, really, really hard. Right now, if I ask who is our target audience, I don't have any information. We have an inventory system that says I have negative 1,100 Snickers bars. I have no information whatsoever. So the first thing was get a point of sale system, get our marketing and demographic information, and stop the hemorrhage. Well, I know that was one of the um, discussions that we have had on the MDD board is trying to get more accountability of what's going on and, and you know people coming so in and, and targeting, but it's never it's never coming. I know that we've asked repeatedly how can we do this you know how what and we're working on it we're working on well, it the point, of sale system, the point of sale system was installed two Sundays ago Brittany yeah. two Sundays ago so they've received some training it, it, it is a very rudimentary simple system but it'll at least tell us who's coming in the door where they come from why they pay that would tie in so where do we want our billboards where do right. we want to market those things you know, if it's eight-year-olds come into the pool on Saturday mornings, do they like Spider-Man? Who? What is it? SpongeBob? Who do we dress up in in character to to have that kind of draw? Item C is um, part of the harbor leases. I'm sorry, item D. Part of the um, harbor leases included uh, the tenants paying their property taxes. When those leases defaulted and those went back to the city, we um, were not in contact with our taxing entities, and some of these taxes were well over 10 years old. Now. Well over 10 years old. Um, these are. It's pretty bad when the city receives the same hot pink yellow lime barger notice that, <laughs> that our residents receive. So, uh, again, setting the example, we have to take care of our own. So we have something in already made. Plans yes, to they've procedures already procedures in place to avoid this. Yes, this happening once again. We sat with the tax entities at well. They forgave everything that was 10 years and older, just because the statute of limitations um, falls off. So what's due is absolutely the minimum of what's due. That, I mean, we can't get any lower than the contract that we have now. Do they pay? Yes, they pay their own. They pay their own taxes. Making sure. Okay. And we we're following up that they are paying. Yes. Okay. So, Alan, on these, I will make a motion individually. Okay. Any other questions on item 13? No? Do I hear a motion for item 13 for A, B, C, and D? I make, I make a motion to be, uh, approve item A, B, C, and D, and I'm going to get item 13. Second the motion. Any additional dollars for the pool? <laughs> Should that be a supplemental later? Or? We can do it as a supplemental. If you like. We'll just do it now. We'll just do it now. We can. Well, if it gets harder, for like uh, 29. Mm -hmm. what's, the what's the magic number? I thought it was 19. Uh, it's just 30. 19. There's 30. 30. 30. So okay. Uh, let me add uh, thirty thousand dollars for uh, repairs needed for the pool. Nineteen to come out of the third. Nineteen is next chance you so yeah, that's twenty nine. Twenty nine, yeah. Run it up to third. <coughs> Second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Bring us 
to item number 14, consider an act on finalizing termination of strike pumps, Combron Harbor lease through Rancifat City Council, which a verbal termination was on 5-31-2012 by City Manager Reggie Winters, with no formal action through the council. Uh, Mayor and Council, the item before you, we have an item in executive session later on uh, on this same piece of property. But before we um, begin any other negotiations, it was important for you to understand strike pumps started the lease, never paid a dollar, and so uh, no formal notice was given. There was no letter. There was no formal action taken. So this is just procedure. Well, I make a motion that we uh, terminate the lease with strike pumps, a uh, carbon harbor lease. Second motion. All the first aye. 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 This will bring us to item number 15, a presentation by Mr. Jason Gildon on the Second Chance Boxing Club and consider an act to approve in the City of Rants Pass continued funding for the Second Chance Boxing Club's electricity. Mr. Gildon. <coughs> I'd like to thank you all for, for having us here today and explain a little bit about the history behind the Second Chance Boxing Club to clear up a little bit of the administration, things about our organization that was being misconstrued or that wasn't being able to be completely <coughs> comprehended. And lastly, I'd like to clear up some accusations that were being made against our organization. Our facility is located on the corner of Greenwood and Saunders, in which I believe for the most part, everyone is completely aware of that. I know that there was uh, some problems brought up thinking that the city was funding something that was registered out of Ingleside, but we established this nonprofit long before we had a facility. And I live in Ingleside, so it was registered under Ingleside address to, uh, so that's where I get my mail. And uh, the six lots that this facility sits on are owned by the nonprofit. Three were purchased through tax foreclosure. Two were obtained by purchasing them from the individuals that previously owned them. And one of the lots was donated to us. And I am completely aware, and I want you all to be aware, that three of these lots are in my name, my personal name. And the reason for this was that when they were purchased through the tax foreclosure, they had to be in an individual's name. There was They couldn't be put into a corporation's name and have to come through the city council and all that to get approved for the tax foreclosure sale. Um, my, my organization's secretary never handled the deeds of these properties and did not notify me that the lots were not transferred into the organization's name until later on. When were they transferred? They, they weren't transferred. Oh, still not? No. Okay. I wasn't notified that they were still in my name until she filed for a divorce. <laughs> then I was notified. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, I was notified that uh, the half the value of those lots were now community property. Therefore, uh, there's a lien on these lots for the next six years until her share of the settlement is paid off. And then they will be um, transferred. Until then, we have protected the investment of the organization through a contract and through the minutes of, through our minutes, making me responsible for the payment of her settlement, and when it's paid off, the lots will be transferred into the organization's name at that time. Uh, we opened up the Second Chance Boxing Club April the 24th in 2006. Since that time, us as an organization have obtained over 50 regional titles, 26 state titles, and six youth national titles. Five of these gentlemen have gone on to become professional fighters and 
between them, between the five of them, they have a combined record of 27 wins and one controversial loss. These kids, being part of this organization, has allowed them to see and experience things that otherwise they would not have never been able to do. I can't possibly sit here and tell you everywhere that we have been, but I'll just sum it up and tell you that we've been from Laredo to Marquette, Michigan, from Oxnard, California, all the way to Miami, Florida, and many, many places in between. Just to make it simple, since we started this gym in 2006, I have put over 500,000 miles on my personal vehicles. Taking all these kids where they need to go. However, the sole purpose of this gym was to extend the youth ministry at the church and to give these kids and young adults a 100% free place and safe place to go after school and to try to instill in these kids that there are other things in this world besides gangs and drugs. The whole vision behind this gym was due to one kid that was in our uh, youth ministry. And this kid changed my life and set me on a mission to help others like him in and around our community. At 15 years old, Mr. Enrique Rodriguez was stabbed nine times less than 100 yards from where we're standing right now. While getting to know this kid, I learned that both parents were or had been in prison. He was allowed to quit school in the seventh grade and would basically defend for himself. So he found himself in the only place a kid left in that position would find himself, and that's on the streets. At 16 years old, he started his amateur career. And due to the way his birthday fell, he immediately started having to, having to fight grown men all the way up to the age of 34 years old. Many of those people that he had fought had been fighting since they were eight. And he didn't do much but uh, have 52 wins behind only 10 defeats, capturing four regional titles one USA Boxing State title, two state Golden Gloves titles, and two different weight divisions. Went to nationals three times, and each of those three times losing very close decisions in the semifinals against the people that went on to win. One, one guy that he fought was on the Olympic team. I had a mother tell me one day at the gym with tears coming down her face. She said, oh, can you make my son like EJ? And I didn't really know what to tell her. Her son couldn't fight. You know, he didn't, he didn't have any athletic ability or anything. And I was just sitting there kind of dumbfounded, not knowing what to say. And, you know, before I could think of something, she said, I know what you're thinking, and I don't, I don't really care. I know my son can't fight, she said, but when EJ first started, he was cold, he was dark, he was lonely. You couldn't pry two words out of him. She said, now you can't get him to shut up. <laughs> she said that, she said he has a glow about him that is the presence of God. And she said, that's what I want. And her son is now the youth leader that has the biggest youth group in the valley. So that's, what, that's how we helped him. That is what this gym is about. Yes, we want to, to build a world champion to bring back to this town and put Aranda's Pass on the map. But realistically, not everyone is going to be become world champions. However, if they will at least give a full-hearted effort and try to become an elite, elite athlete, they will be successful and law-abiding citizens. A good friend of mine was a juvenile judge in Oasis County, and him and some other juvenile judges from around the country did a survey on 200 kids that were involved in the juvenile system. 
And what they discovered was quite alarming. Out of those 200 kids that were wrapped up in the juvenile system, 158 of them went on to state penitentiary. 40 other ones had criminal history and had some sort were put on some sort of probation as an adult. Only two had a clean record. And the only difference between those two and the other 198 were they had parents that were involved in their lives and had them active in different things. That was the only difference. The reason I brought this up is because I had two different occasions a judge released two different kids to me. <laughs> they were both charged with, with pretty serious crimes. And um, the judge the judge released them to me under the conditions that they got in trouble, they had to go back to the TYC. And one of those gentlemen went on to capture a, a bronze medal at the National Junior Olympics in Marquette, Michigan that year. And neither one of them had been in trouble with the law since. Both are now married, they have kids, and just a week ago, I started training one of their children. And he told me that he brought him, that he wanted to make sure that his son had the opportunity that he didn't have. And lastly, it was brought to my attention by more than one person that an accusation were being made that there were drugs being sold out of our facility. And not only is this completely false and a defamation of my character, but it's also an insult to many people. Integrity and puts an unwarranted spotlight and insult to this police department. I, I honestly believe that this is one of the best police departments that we've ever had in this town. And they have a key over there that any one of their cops can come and use our facility anytime they want. How many officers have you had used your facility since you opened up? I'm not there all the time. They're free sheet? they're free to go whenever they want. Do you have a sign up sheet for you or your kids or Accountability officers, no, they can go and come as they please. The police officers and the firefighters can use this facility anytime. We have a cop that lives right next door that has the canine unit. We have a former Aranis Pass cop that is now a DEA federal agent. He has a key and uses the facility on a regular basis. And last but not least, we have a man that is a retired federal agent that has a key and brings his grandson every single day, even on the weekends. Most of the time, I have to call somebody to come unlock the gym for me. There's, there's more keys spread out. I don't even have one sometimes. So making such accusations is completely unprofessional and abuse of the position. There's an old, old quote that states, it takes a village to raise a child. Sometimes, for whatever reason, parents are not involved in the upbringing of their children. So that responsibility has to fall on us, the citizens of this town. Selfish people might ask why. I have my own kids to raise, but I'll tell you why. Children are the message that we send forward to a future we may never see. In order to make our community better, we have to start with the kids. Thank you. What What are your champions, your six fighters, or five fighters that you have? What are their names? We got Ramsey Luna. He's eleven and one. We got Enrique Rodriguez. He's five and zero. Oh. We got Julian Gilden. He's three and zero. Oh. And the other two are back at home in Laredo. Yes, uh, the other question is, uh, my deal is accountability. You know, I asked you about your officers, our officers. How many of them are you using? Them? <clears throat> I know currently that there is one that he speaks of. That, uh, the I have had other officers also inquire about it. They say used to have some weights or something like that. Yeah. I think some of those weights got displaced or, or taken when they were put into storage. No, they're over there.
I guess what I just want to bring up, Jason, is on, uh, on uh, the 9th of September, 2009, the City Council meeting, item number five, was considered an act on the request of Jason Gildon to lease the property at 553 South Saunders to the City of Rancho Pass to be used by Second Chance Boxing. And uh, 513C organization, of course, was a forthcoming lease. And then I, on that day, right here, Tommy and I gave a short history of what you just did, you know, all the good, but you are doing a lot of good for the community and the kids and stuff. That's good. It says, uh, Second Chance Boxing established in 05, stated the city had agreed to furnish all utilities, water, sewer, and electric for the club with permission was given to the use of city buildings in Combron Harbor for the youth club. He stated that the club charges no fees, dues to the young people who participate in the training offered by the club. He also stated that Mr. Gildon had told him that the club could not survive bad to pay its own utilities for the organization. The only income that came was from donations. And then it goes down to say that Mayor Tommy Knight asked the city attorney, which is Mr. Allen Norris, which we're privileged to still have him here with us, could the city transfer the utilities to the new address of South Saunders Street? The city attorney stated it could be, it could probably be done with a contract, but there would have to be some kind of consideration. He stated he understood that Mr. Gildon would make his facility available for our city fire department and police department. And he also stated the city could make a contract with Mr. Gildon to provide the facilities to the city personnel in exchange for its utilities, which you have discussed. And then, of course, the interim city manager was Mike Sullinger at the time. He stated that it was his understanding that Mr. Gildon wanted the city to furnish the water, sewer taps, pay the water and sewer and electric bills. stated that Mr. Gildon would furnish the facility, of course, to the fire department and police departments at their convenience. Discussion was held regarding the property of the city versus the contract between Mr. Gildon, organization Conquering Life, Corporation, DBA, Second Chance Boxing, Boxing Club and the city. The utilities costs for the Boxing Club were discussed and then Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Attaway stated that Mr. Gildon had done a tremendous job, young people in the Boxing Club, giving them purpose of keeping them off the streets, keeping them out of trouble and keeping them in school. Then it says here that, that Mr. Jason Gildon spoke for his request stating that Second Chance Boxing Club gave the young people somewhere to go after school stated that there's 21 state champions in four years and not one of the members of the boxing clubs have been in trouble. The contract, of course, with the boxing club was never discussed after that. Is there any reason why, Mr. Lawrence? I don't recall, Mayor. I do not recall. I mean, that would make it easier for Mr. Gilder to have something to stand on. You know, but he's doing good for the community, but, you know, if it's not in writing other than the, the promise, but, you know, I understand. I've upheld everything I said I was going to do. Yeah. And then I guess the question I want to ask you, Mr. Gilden, I know you're doing a great job with the kids. You're helping everybody out. What, what makes you any special than any the Boy Scouts, church groups, martial arts, Girl Scouts, that we should pay your stuff and not anybody else's? Can you answer me that? Well, we don't we don't charge any, you know we don't charge any dues. Period. I don't think they do either. And you know, Most yeah, they charge dues. You know, the little league charges dues, and there you go. I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to be, you know, I want to keep it for everybody. We can do it for one, let's do it for everybody. Yeah, yeah. You, you should. You know, I also know uh, we do it for the little league and do it for the library and do it well, for everybody. Else and do it for everybody because I believe the little league was given the property to Carl Brown to keep up the little league in that area. The, way, the one we used to play ball on, the original one, where right now is the Shrimpery Park, in exchange for a dollar, that it always be used for that. And also, the city needed the walk, needed that property to expand the city, uh, community parks swimming pool in exchange for the little league to transfer the property over to rebuild them the parks where they are now for a part of the community parks that belong to Rancid Pass. 
for exchange for the utilities, the water, everything sponsored by the Rancis Pass because it is part of the Rancis Pass Community Park. And that was done under that exchange too. I'm sure if you look at the minutes mm -hmm. of the paperwork, Vicky's probably remember. <coughs> you can find that information that that's how that occurred. And that's why the city is actually at least still paying for these things for a little bit. Under that understanding, of course, for Mr. Tom Brown's wishes. I think that was Mr. Truitt. Was it Truitt? Yeah. yeah. And the, uh, the property is under the city's name. Yes. It's not under the Vicky Abreu or Don Chapo or Brandon Gomez person entity, but it's under the name of uh, City of Ranch Pass, correct? Yes. Yes. Apples to apples. Conquering life was under the city of Rents Fast, and we could say, Yeah, pay it off you know, without you know thinking twice of anybody else. But it, the deal is, it's under your 501c, which is you know, are you still associated with the church? No, group? so you're no longer with the church group. No, we, st we started, our, yeah, we, we carried on their name. That's how we established our name, was through their youth ministry. Through their youth ministry, yeah, right? <laughs> so you borrow their name and you keep going on, yeah. But yet, three of the other properties are still in your personal name. Correct. So I just want to make sure that's clear. I guess that's all I have for the time. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Since we just had Mr. Gillen speak up about this, one of the things I'd like to do, I'd like to open up the floor to the public. If anybody else would want to add to this or take away from it, just state your name and I'm John. I'm John Smith, the uh, Scoutmaster for Troop 25. Also a member of the Concerned Citizens for Scouting. These boys do not pay any dues. The fundraisers that they do pays for the electricity, the insurance, the upkeep of that building, and their own needs. They don't go by looking for you for handouts. They go out and earn their own stuff. I want to clear that up real quick. Box is a great thing. I'd love to get my grandson in it. But my grandson knows he has to pay his own way. So you teach uh, morals? Yes, sir. Right. Too many people standing with their hands up. These boys don't stand with their hands up. They go up and make it happen. No. Not, to, not to be disrespectful to you, sir. These kids at the boxing club, I would look at it as bouncer prevention. You keep them down the straight and narrow, that's going to keep Eric's job a lot nicer Absolutely. and everything. That, and he, Jason yeah, is doing one hell of a job down there. They do fundraising just like we well, they, I know that, that. I, but I'm not. I'm not pitting y'all against each other. I, you know, I was I was in, uh, in Troop 25 back in the day. We were known as the Mafia of the Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have I have very very you know, strong feelings towards the troop. You know, some of my fondest memories growing up are compliments of Troop 25. Let me let me just tell you. Over the last four years, these boys have raised over a quarter of a million dollars, and that's how we built that facility. So they didn't know one standing around with their hand up. That's good, Jason. So out of a quarter of a million, they couldn't pay the utilities? No. I'm just asking. Huh? I said out of a quarter of a million, they couldn't put a little side to pay the utilities for you? Looks like that. What's that over here? Oh, you got to keep in mind, he's doing the service. You know, he's, he's keeping these kids with something else to do. Those that don't want to be in the discount or can't afford to pay for the little league. So he's doing that in the service also. He's doing the community in the service. Hello, I'm Mac Oliver. I own uh, Oliver's Martial Arts down on the harbor. Uh, first of all, I want to say I think Jason Gilden is doing a great job with them guys he's got down there and the girls too. You always leave the girls out. You always say guys, but he's got some pretty tough girls down there too. Uh, I helped him. When we set up that organization, I was part of his board of directors, so I know what the way he set it up. And I think it was three years after he set his organization up like that, I set my organization up like that. And uh, as far as dues, I don't charge dues for my guys. It's donation purposes only. If they can give money, they give money. And that's how I pay the electric bill and the water bill now. Uh, I have members or Employees of the city right now that have kids down there, they haven't paid me a dime. The lady at the end down there, her kids come down there. She has not paid me a dime. 
I don't charge, like I said. Now, I'm going to throw this out here, all right? I have a $4,800 water bill that they're back charging me for a water bill that was never in my name. I don't have a problem paying the water bill and the electric bill now because it is in my name, but I wish y'all would strike what y'all say I owe y'all off the record. Well, That's all I have to say. I'll address that. But at that time when I had a mayor sitting on this board of directors and told me if that water is on, don't worry about it, and it had a lock on it, am I supposed to cut the lock off and turn the water off?
what we can do is we can put out we can put out a survey to all of the nonprofits, um, determine what the request for funding would be, so we have an idea: is it fifty thousand? Is it forty thousand? Whatever that number is, and staff will work hard to make that number a possibility. We we have been saving some dramatic dollars and not paying third-party firms and doing all the work in-house, and and I'm committed that we can do that. I need that direction from council. Lost can spread evenly throughout the year. It, if we would, what it would require, council member, is we would do a budget amendment. Basically, we'd move the money from somewhere, whether it's from reserves or another department or something that's not being used. Um, we would allocate it, and we'd have to come up with the process, just like the hot funds. They apply; it comes before council to get approved. There's got to be a standard. We must have a standard on, on the dollars and what that rate of return is. If, if they're promising, you know, to keep youth off the streets, how many youth did they serve, and what right. is their recidivism rate? Did they go back to jail? You know, those kinds of things. And those are simple benchmarks that I'm sure all of the organizations keep. And if they don't, then this is a chance to start. Sounds good. Tell me the motion to table and so. Maybe maybe the first uh, in April. Give them a April the third. <laughs> Right now we have a motion to table this to April the third. Continue as we're, you know, paying as it is right now, and nothing changes just until come up with it. Have the city staff to do a. I'd like to finish this now. Yeah. So then there's no second on that. Okay. Well, I make a motion that we continue funding the second chance boxing. Second. All first, say aye. Aye. I abstain because I think we need to give the city staff a, uh, a chance to come up with a plan for all the other organizations. I don't want to abstain, I'll just say no. <coughs> just take them all to your house. Well, we just from 5 30 to 8. Come by my house or you can stop by the bakery and eat. Is council still requesting the information for the the, the other um, nonprofits? We can put a survey out and, and kind of get a litmus of what the yes. other organizations. Yeah. 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 That brings us to item number 16. Uh, Mayor and Council, as you are aware, we went out for RFQ. We went out with an RFQ for engineering services. We did have seven firms who responded. Our current engineer is also one of the firms. The way the RFQ was written is uh, Council will appoint a um, reviewing committee. Um, that reviewing committee is supposed to be composed of a city staff, and if there's a council member who, who wants to sit on the reviewing committee, we, we welcome that. I'd like to get this done tomorrow uh, from 3.30 to 6.30 for the packets because we have some pending um, plans that are due for grant deadlines. We've taken a preliminary review of the packets. All of the packets contain the necessary information, but you can see from the information provided what kind of work they would provide to the city. So. We've uh, preliminarily uh, ranked them in terms of quality of submission. We have top four firms out of seven that we'd like to um, move forward with. The plan is to have more than one firm do work for the city. I don't want to manage three, four contracts, but I definitely believe um, building on each engineering company's strengths would give us a better um, overall test and return for our So I'm asking the council to appoint um, um, staff recommends um, myself, Paul Alvarado, the public works director, and <coughs> Yvonne Stonebreaker to be assigned to the committee to score the, um, the engineering package. So this is just authorizing you three to go through these RFQs? Yes, and then on the 17th, we'll bring you um, the recommendation and the, the scoring packets. I make a motion that we assign 
signed with Sylvia Peru, Paul Alvarado, and Yvonne Stonebreaker to select from the engineering pool. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Number 17, <laughs> presentation on the City of Rance Pass Annexation Plan, Mr. LNB. <coughs> Mr. Benales is here to give you an update on the annexation plan. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, we had a little bit of a miscommunication. I was actually expecting this, uh, I think, two weeks from now, but nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless. Well, we can, we, we're, we're, we're running late. If council, if council chooses the table, we can certainly do that. Yeah, that's okay. Give us just that. Uh, uh, just a very brief update. Uh, we're still collecting map information so that we can do an accurate assessment of uh, where the city is uh, with regard to the uh, adjoining properties. Uh, we've had some uh, visits with the city manager and senior staff to identify the uh, areas that are uh, prioritized or pr higher priority uh, for annexation. And now it's a matter of... moving him along faster than I thought. <laughs> and, and now it's a matter of uh, what we're doing right now is looking more closely using uh, satellite images uh, to identify uh, those areas that would actually uh, fall within uh, exempt annexation. Uh, which uh, would be the city would be able to pursue uh, uh, on short notice and uh, move forward with those. So it's a matter of uh, uh, fine tuning the uh, property ownership information, identifying uh, which of those properties may be uh, have residents may, may have residences on them. Uh, compare that to the city's existing. Uh, uh, boundaries, existing areas to make sure that we comply with the uh, area limitations, uh, identify any properties that uh, qualify for ag exemption where those have to be treated separately. There's a there's a uh, an additional uh, consideration or process that needs to uh, be involved uh, for agricultural uh, properties. So we're just uh, doing a lot of uh, information gathering at this point in time and uh, hope to bring back a uh, much more detailed and filled in update at your next meeting on the 17th. But I'd nonetheless be uh, glad to answer any questions you may have at this point. I'm sorry, I'm a pusher. I'm pushing it faster and faster. Uh, That's your good. preliminary plans will already uh, encompass uh, water and sewer, right? Well, no, we're starting to uh, talk about uh, well, yes. The short answer to your question is yes. Uh, part of any annexation proceedings are uh, identifying uh, services uh, that the city currently provides to its residents and uh, uh, <coughs> providing documentation that shows that those services will also be provided to the, any uh, newly annexed areas. A, a service plan is what we are talking about is the technical term. So uh, the, that will not be a very in-depth uh, evaluation. It would be more of a cursory evaluation with some, uh, probably some, just some preliminary cost estimates included. Thank you. Uh, several TCEQ violations. Actually, 
February has been a very busy <coughs> month for the city of Aransas Pass and our state agencies. We have been visited by GLO, TCQ, the Department of Agriculture, um, Comptroller's Office, and a whole host of others this month. So it's been a very busy month. We did receive some TCQ violations um, on our wastewater treatment plant that we discussed with you on some items that are going to be needing repair uh, on our water, um, our water storage tanks as well. Staff has worked through all of them. We do have responses to the states on every single one of them. There are no fines that are being faced by the city at this particular point in time. We do have to submit some detailed plans on um, replacing, repairing, or coming up with a maintenance plan. One of the first items that we need to address is the fence around the wastewater treatment plant. Um, the state has pretty stringent violations on not being able to get in, and our fence is in pretty bad disrepair. So we are going to be moving some money at the next council meeting from our water sewer fund, which is intent for those particular purposes, to replace the fence and some other necessary items um, at the treatment plant. We did have the visit from Parks and Wildlife on uh, the ramps. I will be meeting with Alan and um, outside council to determine how we're going to move forward um, with the ramps. Uh, it's going to be a determination council is going to also have to make at the next council meeting. Um, we do have uh, we did have a GLO visit today on uh, the bulkhead repair. The um, we're, we're fast going on the at-risk list. Um, council took action to remove Naismith Engineering. We'll be going out for bids for uh, alternate engineering firms. Um, we did have the RFQ closed for the Matlock Waterline project today. That will be awarded also on March 17. Uh, TxDOT is, uh, is being very generous with the city of Aransas Pass right now. We do have some drainage projects that are going to be coming along 1069. We have a, a massive drainage need right by the Lowe's and the Walmart. I don't know that you're aware. I know Rand's aware. Water backs up and it floods baseline data, and then it comes back onto Luda. Um, they have a proposed fix that would not cost the city anything. We just have to allow them to do it during the 1069 repair, um, and we'll have to enter into an agreement with Texan. But I, I talked to them at length about our downtown revitalization plans, and they had some monies available. They are going to commit to redo a section of commercial in our downtown area that would um, repave it, restripe it, resurface it, and bring it up to the standard that we are is. So <coughs> that's expected to start work in the early fall, okay. assuming they don't have any other budget constraints. But it falls in line with um, some of our bond plans to improve the downtown area. Hey, so we have one question. Uh, with all the new truck traffic that mm -hmm. we incur, or is TxDOT taking into account on the condition We have to um, have them do a study and do the traffic counts and, and that kind of thing. Um, Ingleside is moving forward with some alternate roadways to take that truck traffic off some of their more heavily traveled streets. Um, I don't believe we have the same option. There's no really way to take them off Wheeler and commercial because that's the main cut through. It is a textile roadway. So they, I, they haven't asked for any city participation at this point. Um, Michael was going to give you an update on um, structures selected for repair or demolition. Um, we do have seven, ten. How quick can you do that? Okay. <coughs> um, we had several council members ask about the Jackson Hotel and the current condition and those other structures. We have partnered with the chamber. The chamber's members have committed $500 per structure. We're going to allow them to put a sign out that says sponsored by, you know, whoever it is, $500 toward the, um, the demolition and um, Republic Services, if we can again negotiate the final contract, there's also some halls that would be included in there that would be um, almost basically free to the property owner just to get the city, uh, just to get the demolition um, started.
on Thursday, Friday for Rotary. I'm president-elect of the local Rotary chapter. Rotary is picking up the bill. Um, it requires my absence from the city, but I will be available by cell and computer till all hours of the day. And I have a question on, on text 1069. When is yes, that going to? 1069 is let out for bid, and it's going to be built. Um, what is the technical term on the as built? As bid, as built. The plan, when, when they just let out the, the engineering and the construction at the same time? Design build. Design build. So it's, it's a very short project. They expect to break ground in September and to be done by mm -hmm. the following summer. It's going to be a five lane. Um, five lane? Well, it's sort of five lane. It's a turning lane. two very wide shoulders that will allow for people to come in. It's got um, one lane in either direction and the center turning lane. So as you're in any one lane, you can move over to the shoulder and come around. Um, we were told, the city was told by our prior engineering firm that our plans for a water line along 1069 that were funded out of bonds were complete. TechStop visited with me on Thursday. That is not correct. There have been no plans submitted by the city of Aransas Pass for any water lines on 1069. That will also be going out for RFQ on the 17th of um, March. Mm -hmm. Have we been billed for that? <laughs> yes. I will triple check, but I believe it's included in the 269 plus thousand. So we are, um, um, because TechSot is in an, on a fast track, we will be um, needing to get those water lines designed. It is a water line. It's not a, it's not a sanitary sewer line or lift station, thankfully. But out on the 13th, after you guys um, selected the firms, then we can move forward and fast track the design and get it to TechSot. Um, they've assured me that if we get it by the June, July time frame, that we're still good. Uh, the problem is if we don't do it along that time frame, all of the driveways that TechSot cuts, we have to come back and cut and then replace and repair. We'll and get it done. Work. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We will get it done. So we'll get it done. That moves along to number 19, favorite citizen comments. We've got three minutes. State your name and your pleasure, please. My name is Carol Salinas, and I hope I'm not out of line with what I'm going to say. I'm very disappointed in the leaders of our youth for some of the finger pointing, the accusations, uh, the things that were said. I think these young people and I want to commend from both groups to be here tonight. Uh, I think they're a fine representation but I think our leaders need to consider they made some good points but the way they made them I think were a little out of line and I just couldn't sit here without saying that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi y'all. My name is James Russell, and I'm the old narc that the coach was talking about. I've been in that with his organization for the last 10 months. I've got my grandson in this program, and they haven't done nothing but wonders with him. And I'm proud to say I'm proud to be a part of that family down there because they're all wonderful, respectful, and hard workers. And if y'all could help them out, I'd really appreciate it. My name is Wilberto Rivera, and I hope Jason down there is a coach with a second chance of boxing. And uh, I want to thank the council and mayor for uh, your support, not only with uh, the boxing club, but with all the other organizations. Uh, one thing that Jason uh, didn't mention was that uh, we're planning to have a smoker, which is a one-day boxing tournament. It has probably very little economic impact on the on the city, but I know that this past year he, he did a uh, the three-day Junior Olympic tournament, which did have a good sizable economic impact on the city because these um, boxing clubs had to come as far west as Kerrville, from Laredo down to Brownsville, all the way from Austin and San Antonio to participate in the tournament, and uh, you know these clubs had to stay in the hotels and and you know, buy some of the merchandise here in the area. So uh, that that did have an economic impact. So it's not all just, uh, 
you know, give me. And we're hoping that in the future we can uh, bring some more of those tournaments down here to Aransas Pass. So, again, thank you, Mayor, City Council. Can I make a comment? Uh, I'd like to, uh, just from being out at the, I know, was it last Saturday that the, some of the Boy Scouts were out there working with the Little League? I know they, they put a lot of sweat. So just wanted to say that I know that the, uh, uh, I know my husband Rudy and the uh, board was really appreciative because that was, that was a big help to them. So just wanted to recognize the Boy Scouts for being out there. And it's been a good, what, five or six hours working out there. So just wanted to thank you for volunteering your time to help out. My name's Russ Point. I live in Gaslight Village, and my concern is Con Brown Harbor. I think you're aware of that. <laughs> Uh, the question I have, and I have nothing against the boat barn, but why were the city docks, public docks, moved to down by the boat barn rather than down by the boat ramp where they should be? People launching their boats now have to tie up in the boat ramps to put their truck away, to load, to unload, which is blocking the boat ramps. But the question I have is why are the city docks down on that end? There's no signs at all, no sign, nobody knows, everybody I've talked to says, well, we thought those were the boat barns. They don't even know that the city docks. So my question is, and you might research it a little bit, is why were they moved? Because I, if I'm not mistaken, they were, on the original plans, they would be put in down by the, the new boat ramps. So other than that, streets, have you looked at 13th West? <laughs> Going out to uh, from Wheeler to Matlock, uh, if you got a four-wheel drive, it's not too bad because you can get through it. But otherwise, it is a street that needs looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Council, we will be coming to you. Um, part of the bond uh, requirements is that we give you an estimate of uh, streets and how much they're going to cost and all of that, and you'll you'll have the opportunity to select the streets that we'll be working on. This is not going to be our first pass at um, improvements. In uh, two years from now, we'll have some additional bonding capacity of an additional $7 million. I'm assuming we don't give it away again. We'll have it to invest in ourselves. We were putting money aside for, to try to do at least one street. We did. We put in 100000 into um, this year's budget. I think we whittled it back to 50000 but. Um, this, this section at Saunders and Beasley that Mr. Estes uh, was adamantly uh, for is about $46,000, just that particular section. And that's only a street repaving. I don't know what the infrastructure is on, on 13th Street, but that's always the scary thing. Once you touch the street, what do the water and sewer lines look like underneath? So. citizen comments. That's going to bring us to item number 20. We will recess the open meeting and retire to the second session pursuant to chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code for A, B, and C, which A is Ronald Yeager, Mr. Howe. B is, uh, what's that? 